Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our last office hour from the Federal Emergency Relief Programs for this school year. We have appreciated our time together and have a little bit more content to share with all of you folks today. As usual, we'll start with introductions. My name is Shelley Shassi Jandro. I'm the director of the Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs. Okay, I'm Karen Kuziak. I coordinate the ARP and any other ESSER programs on the program side. I'm Kevin Harrington and I am the Gear and Eans coordinator. I am Maisha Asha. I am the fiscal coordinator. I'm Natalie Owens and I'm a procurement analyst. We're also joined by our teammates, Deanna Reverge and Terry Beal, and they support our work in regards to the management analyst and invoice review. Sorry, I was on mute, didn't realize it. <laughs> so today, our primary focus is three uh, very time sensitive items that we're talking about collectively with you folks. One about timelines and invoicing, also about the URLs for spending plans, also known as your ARP application potentially, and some general friendly reminders. So we're gonna get right into a few of the things related to timeline and spending. Uh, this is not new information. We have had an Easter dashboard for over a year now, but we do wanna draw your attention to the fact that this page is being visited more frequently. On the left-hand side, you can see that the dashboard kind of highlights holistically where we are collectively as a state. And as you can see, this date is uh, um, from almost a year ago, uh, July, 2023, but essentially you can filter by dates and see new donuts about where we are spending wise but there's also a component to be able to see that granular at the district level information, which is on the right-hand side of the screen. Again, this is a poll from July of 2023, but this is being updated monthly and individuals, our community members, media, they are visiting this page because this is an area in which they can identify how much funding remains at the, at the district level. So um, in this yep. in this slide, um, we would like to reiterate that our obligation period for ARP ESR fund is September 30th, 2024, by page of which all those uh, expense needs to be um, expensed. And uh, if you have any question regarding obligation, depending on the type of the expense, the the you know, explanation is available uh, under 2CFR 76707. Or if you have any question, you can reach out to me or any other member of our team. And uh, all these um, obligated expenses needs to be invoiced not later than December 30th, 2024. So this date is the invoice completion date for DOE. So. I would, uh, I mean, and that's why we mentioned preferably much sooner. So uh, I, I would say at least two weeks, if you can give us two weeks window so that we can review the invoices and complete it by December 30th and send it to DAF. That will be great. And um, um, yeah, even though we are saying say, December 30th, um, we will prefer you send us all those invoices uh, much uh, sooner than, uh, you know, it's better sooner than later. So in, this is also very familiar uh, with you guys because this is the, our timeline. I would just like to um, re-emphasize that um, the DOE offer for offer team, the initial review takes seven to 10 business days. That means business days are excluding any holidays or weekends. 
So when we are done with reviewing the initial in in uh, in, in, in initially reviewing the invoices, it sends to it sent to it was uh, it sent to DAFs and they uh, it took like it takes generally seven to twenty five business days for payment processing and then additional three to ten business days for reimbursement checks to be mailed. So altogether, the whole process may take seventeen to forty five business days from invoice submission to get the um, reimbursement check. So in this slide, um, we would like to uh, mention that we are hosting a second office hour for late liquidation extension. Uh, but please know that um, only activities that have been properly and timely obligated by 9.30, 2024, will be considered for late liquidation extension. So our second office hour on this topic will be on June 26, 2024 at 10 a.m. And here is the link and uh, one of our team member will put that link in the chat. So this is the registration link. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. This is probably going to be a reminder for some of you who've had your performance, uh, performance reports questioned by either Kevin or me or sent back to you. There is the requirement in ARP to have two significant plans uh, posted on your website during the duration of the grant. So the grant continues through September 30th, 2024. I had someone ask me the other day if they still needed that plan up because they'd spent all their funds already. Yes, you do still need to have it up at least until September 30th, 2024. And I'll talk about some uh, exceptions to that. So one is the summary of how you are using the ARP. It's just the ARP is the only one that's required, but just how you've been using or are using the ARP funds. And we bring this to your attention because should you, should someone in your business office or your superintendent say, oh, we've got to create a new project to use up all that money which some of your districts are doing right now, you need to, someone needs to change that summary of the plan that's hanging out on your website. And it has to be available to your community, to legislators in Maine who are very interested in these plans, to the U.S. Department of Education. Early on in these funding, in, in this funding, the U.S. Department of Education was particularly interested and asked us for a collection of all the URLs from across the state of Maine in a spreadsheet so they could go by and individually check them. It was one of the early things that they could check to see if we were in compliance. These days, they may not be checking that as much as they're checking the funding. And, and you know, we're reporting on all those things that you reported to us, we're reporting to them now, but they may go back and look at that, you, those, that collection of URLs, which is why we ask for it periodically. So um, the plan should align with your approved application and they should be available through the performance period. And if you have not liquidated by September 30th, if you're still sending in invoices, then you need to keep it up through January 28th, 2025. So, and, and if you're one of those few districts and there'll be more about this later and don't start jumping for joy because this isn't a given. Um, if you have an extension or a waiver for late liquidation beyond that period, if that's, an, if, if that's a situation, you must keep it up until all the money is spent, invoiced, and accounted for, or invoiced. <laughs> all right, thank you. That's the use of funds plan. The other one is on the next slide, is the safe return to in-person instruction and continuity of services plan. Same timeline, all through the duration of the grant while it's active and in your hands and you're manipulating those funds, this plan must be on the website, even though we know you've had in-person instruction for probably the last two years, I think. Uh, so it's a requirement, it's mandated. It was an amendment added to this bill by the Senator from uh, New Hampshire that there be a safe return to in-person instruction so that families would know whether or not um, it was a hybrid situation or regular school day. Now, one of the requirements in this is specifically in the law is every six months it must be reviewed and revised if necessary. So in March, what happened was the main our US CDC sent out some guidelines about, um, I, I think it just kind of loosened some of the restrictions on the stay at home policy. I don't, I don't know the policy exactly, but they, 
they uh, made some tweaks to the uh, masking, stay at home, quarantine um, expectations following COVID. And that was a natural time for school districts to say, oh, look, here's a new policy. We could change what we're requiring students to go do. They don't have to stay home so long. And so a number of school districts, and we saw it in the report, in March, you had a date that you said, yeah, our school, you know, you said we reviewed it and we revised it on March uh, 2020, 2024. Um, fear not, there's another opportunity to do that again. So it's a naturally occurring situation that uh, uh, USDDC released guidance that was in a newsletter, I think that came out on Friday for you folks about in general spreading, uh, preventing spread of infections. And so at this moment, if you didn't review it in March, you can have a situation where your school nurse looks at that. The school nurse says to the superintendent, oh, we should get this new information from uh, CDC about uh, preventing, um, preventing infections into the student handbooks for the next school year. You know, something that you're naturally going to be doing. And the superintendent says, yeah, good idea. Let, can you come to our, our leadership team meeting and talk about it? Yes, the nurse can. That's an example of reviewing your plan confirming that it's okay, tweaking it if necessary, put the date down so you know you've tweaked that plan. That's an example of reviewing it. And now you know you've reviewed it within every six months and that should take you through, right, to the end of the grant. Uh, maybe not if we're asking you to do it up through July, but maybe you could do it and say you did it in July in order to get up through January. Let's say you did it in July so that it could be in the student handbooks in a, in a good, good um, explanation that should take you through the grant. So it's a naturally occurring event that you can use to review the safe return to in-person instruction. Okay. So here are some reminders of things coming up. Um, so it's great to see so many of you here today. Um, you know that uh, you're, you're more likely to be on top of all the expectations that are uh, had of you for grant management if you attend the office hours. Um, and not only do we have this OFERP or, or Federal Emergency Relief office hours, the federal fiscal office hours for Maine DOE also has, also occurs on the fourth Thursday of every month. And that's where friends from our friends, I guess, colleagues of ours from um, ESEA, IDEA, uh, Perkins or career and technical education and child nutrition, all of which have, you know, federal components to their programming, federal funding that, that uh, come in. Uh, we, we meet together and highlight some of the seasonal announcements for um, federal grants. So that, so certainly come to that. That's another way to keep on top of things so that you're not surprised that, gosh, something's due. All right, thanks. Um, and there's a link and a registration. Uh, typically, now we're just back to talking about our federal emergency relief on our website. So that's the first link there. There's information about ESSER funds. There's information about EANS. Should any of you be on here who are from a non-public school, you also receive money through the uh, ARP fund. Um, so there's information there. Uh, we still have people writing to me saying, oh, we've got some money left over. What can we do? What kind of project? You still need to go, it still need to go back to the use of funds and align any new project to the intent of the grant, which was at this point to respond to the effects of the pandemic. So check the use of funds for um, answers about what kinds of things are allowable and certainly will help you interpret that if you need to. Um, and there's the general website. That last link is the general website for our pages that our, our team that's here today maintain. Okay, and here, speaking of our team, here are our names. I think at one point, one of the earlier slides, unless it was changed, asked you to, to sign in to the chat. Did, you, did we mention that? That's a way for us to know, another way for us to know, okay, who's, who's attending these meetings? Who's, on top, who's staying on top of what's required for the grants? Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. And I know that I, I have seen the name of someone on here who I owe an email, email to, and I will get to that right after this meeting. Um, and uh, let's see, here are all of our social media and website 
contacts. And I think every uh, slide presentation now that you're seeing from Maine DOE is going to have this page, how to find us online. Thanks for thanks all of you for um, sending in your notes, your your names, and what district you're representing.